I'm going to demonstrate how you can create a drum track very quickly using Logic Pro. Um, you can use that track when you're finished, either as part of your recording session or uh, export it and use it in something like MainStage. So we're going to start by creating a new project in Logic. Um, make sure to set your tempo where you want it for the song and your time signature. I like to set the key signature as well. Empty project, choose. And then it's going to ask us to create a track, so we'll create a software instrument. And I have mine set up to automatically create a drum track. So uh, from here, the first thing I'm going to do, turn on the metronome. And I'm going to create a count in one, two, three, four for my song. So I'm going to press Command K. And because I'm in this, uh, have have this set for drums, I'm going to check the sound of the letter E. That's the one I want. Now you may need to adjust. Uh, you can choose any sound you like for this, but um, use the letter Z to move the. Uh, portion of the key keyboard you're using up or down Z and X um, chances are Z is going to bring you to get that clap okay um, next thing you're going to do is actually create just a four beat count in so make sure that SoCal we've got record armed and press the record button and then be ready to press that E to match the timing record And boom, I'm done. That's my four beat counting. That worked. I'm also going to set this just to make sure it's a little more accurate. Quantize to the quarter note. My counting is now finished. I'm going to close off control or command K. Close down that keyboard window. And the next thing I'm going to do is create a scratch track of my song. Um, if I've already done recording for the song, great. Uh, if I haven't, I'm just going to do a, a quick scratch recording of it that will give me the, uh, the layout of the song. Where is the intro? Where are the verses and choruses and bridges and outro or any other sections of the song? Now, I've already done that recording, so you won't have to listen to me run through it. So I'm just going to drag that recording on here. The important thing is that you do that recording along with your metronome so that you get the right timing as we go through this. So briefly. That's what my uh, beginning of my song sounds like. So um, good. I've got the song recorded. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the global tracks right here. And we're going to listen to that recording and we're going to add arrangement regions, <clears throat> excuse me, um, by pressing the plus sign right here. The very first one we create is called intro. I'm going to rename it to count four. That refers to the four beats that I've just created right here and shrink that region down to match those four beach beats. I'm going to rename this region while I'm at it, rename region to count four. And then uh, again, I'm just gonna play through the song and I'm gonna keep adding arrangement regions as we go uh, and adjust them to match the positions of the song. So I'm gonna first put in the first region, call it intro. My second region is gonna be my first verse. So now we'll start playing and listening and adjusting this border between the regions to the right place. So here we go, count. This is our intro. And there's the end of the intro, the beginning of the verse. section. We'll call this section a uh, uh, chorus as good as anything. All right, now we're into what we'll call 
call the bridge section. And we'll call this our outro. Alright, there's the end of the song. So we'll stop that. I'm going to turn off the metronome. And one thing I want to point out is that uh, when I create the end of this last region, this outro region, my final strum was right here on the third beat of the 22nd measure, but I dragged that region just past there to get one more beat out of that. Uh, basically, if you cut that right to here, our, when our drum track is created, it's going to actually end just before what you want. So you want to give it one beat into that final measure. So now our song is laid out. We have an intro, a verse, a chorus, a bridge, and an outro. Um, so that's good. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to actually create the drum track itself. We do that by coming up here to track, selecting new drummer track. And here we go. We've got a new track. Inside of that track, I have regions to match each of the arrangement regions that I had previously created. Um, and so that's that's done, except that it probably isn't going to sound the way we want it to yet. So we'll go down to the drummer controls. First of all, we can choose what style of music we're playing, which will impact what things are going to sound like. Um, we choose rock. We then get to choose which uh, drum player we want. I'm going to stick with Kyle. And lastly, we can choose what, uh, what drum kit we want to play. In this area here, we can change basically how loud and soft the drummer is playing, as well as complexity or how simple it may be. And then finally, in this region, we can select which individual parts of the drum kit are going to be playing at any given time, as well as adjusting the fills and swing beat. So um, we'll select the first region of our drum uh, track, and we're going to play through the song one more time. And this time, we're going to make adjustments to, uh, to these different uh, components of the drummer as it plays through just to make it sound good. So I've got my intro selected. I'm gonna turn cycle on so that it will loop through that until I've got it playing the way I want it to. So let's begin the play. All right, I'm gonna back off a little bit on this guitar so that we can hear the drums better. All right, and then um, to me, I'm going to bring this down. Yeah, I'm real quiet here. Um, to me, those toms are just too intense. That's a little bit better, but you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take this bass drum out and just put in the hi-hat and see what we get. All right, that sounds... That sounds pretty decent for an intro, so I'm going to move on to the next section, select the verse section of the drum track. And that's okay, but we can play around with the specific beats that he's using. That sounds better to me. Now I'm going to put that back and we'll move on to the next section. Oh, I think that sounds pretty good. So we'll leave that one alone and we'll move on to the bridge, bridge section.
All right, I like that. And then finally the outro. Definitely don't like those symbols. Listen to this outro one more time. All right, just adjusting those loudness and complexity a little. There we go. We got a drum track. It's finished. Um, that's all it takes to, to generate your drum track. If you're gonna continue uh, doing more recording here in Logic, great, your drum track is there and ready to go. If you uh, are going to use this track in something like uh, Main Stage where you wanna have this drum track exported for that, then I'll show you a couple more things we can do to finish that up. Um, so first off, we've now that we have the drum track itself created, we're gonna create one more set of regions. So here under Marker, uh, actually, before we do that, we're going to select uh, select SoCal. I'm going to shift click uh, to get my clap my clap track here, the first count in, and the uh, the drum itself. So you can see I've got all these regions selected. You come up here to marker and select create markers from regions. When we do that, you'll see we get these region markers that again correlate to each of the regions that we had created originally as arrangements then as our drum tracks so we've got all those and these are going to help us when we get into main stage they're going to help give us a uh, position in our song as we go so i'm going to now bounce this song out to a new track so i'm going to press command b for uh, actually first i'm going to again select these two areas so that I get, I have selected the regions that I want. I'm also going to mute the guitar track. I don't want to export that. Now command B. And first off, I'm going to choose PCM and AIFF for my file format. This will retain the information for me, both about the tempo and about these um, marker regions that I created. And those will uh, we'll be able to use those when we get into main stage. So PCM, AIFF, make sure that our start and end areas are right. So that matches the very beginning of the song to 22.3 out where we've selected here. So that's great. And then finally include audio tail. This piece is really important because what this will do is if, especially if you have something like a, a cymbal crash at the end of your song, include audio tail what it's going to do is it's going to say okay when you bounce this out don't actually end the audio recording right here at uh, at this point but any ringing of that crash that goes on or any other ringing that may happen in your song um, that that will all be captured as part of the song as well uh, so if you don't have that and you have a crash at the end the crash is just going to splash and end whereas with this audio tail it will let it ring out so, okay, good, we're gonna bounce it. Say okay, give it a title. I'm gonna replace this existing hobo. Replace. Bounces it out and we're done. All right, if you wanna see how you would use that file in something like main stage, I'll have a link to the other video that you can follow and see how to import that hobo.aif into main stage and use it there. I hope this has been helpful. If you have any questions, please leave a message in the comments and I will do my best to answer them as quickly as I can. Thanks. Cheers.